This is going to be another question and answer video. And this question has to do with the thought life. What can we do about our thought life? In Genesis 6, 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Look at that. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart. They always tell the kids to use your imagination. And the older you get, the worse this advice can become. The older you get, the more filthy images you have in your mind. And we live in a day where people are obsessed with images. We live in a time where images move. There is an innumerable amount of images that one can put in front of the eyes and just continue to scroll to see instantly another image. People spend hours on the TikTok app where the average everyday person can become a stripper for the entire world to see in their own bedroom and these images are stored in the mind of people and the more filthy images you have in your mind the more easy it is to sin in numbers thirty three fifty two, god commands to destroy all their pictures it says then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places God has made your brain a lot more complex than any man can make anything. You can take the images in your brain and make a movie out of them in your mind. You can literally get lost in your thought life. You can be sitting in class and get lost in your thoughts, in the images that you have in your brain. Some people even use their thought life as a way to escape the present world that they are presently in. This is daydreaming. Some people sit and make up stories in their mind where they are exalted. Maybe they are uh, a champion in sports or, you know, a millionaire or whatever you can imagine. You can imagine. And you can get lost in your thought life. It becomes a little fantasy world for many people. And in these fantasies, the people themselves are the ones who are exalted most times. And this is because in 2 Timothy 3, 2, it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And in the person's thought life, it's about them. It's about taking care of them. It's about them being exalted most times. In a day when the video games are so realistic and the, the women dress so immodestly, the movies are so dirty, the people are uh, so bad of an influence on each other, this all contributes to the mind of a person becoming very, very filthy. If you were to step inside their thoughts and walk around in them, like you would one of these open world video games like Grand Theft Auto, then you would see the most wicked abominations imaginable. While we go through this study, uh, examine yourself, examine your own thought life. What are you thinking about? If I were to just jump in your brain and be able to walk through it like you could one of these video games like Grand Theft Auto or something, what would I see? Let's take a look at the thought life of a person in 2020. If we see a person's mind as a city that you could walk through, then you'll see their most common thoughts revolve around maintaining the city, preserving the city, adding things to the city, making sure no one takes over the city. It's not about what happens later. Uh, the thoughts are earthly-minded and not eternal-minded. Uh, Colossians 3 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, but in your mind, what are most things on? They're probably mostly on things on the earth. In Matthew 6 20, it says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Uh, your thoughts can be stolen, the devil can take away things out of your heart, the Bible says. But let's take a journey through the mind and heart of the average person, the average everyday person in 2020 and throughout history. Let's walk right up to the door. And at this door, you will see Jesus Christ standing there at the door. In Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. 
You see, Jesus Christ is standing at every person's door, wanting them to willingly let him in. He's not going to barge in, but that's what we will do. That's what we're going to do. You know, Jesus doesn't barge in. He wants a person to, you know, accept him of their own free will. But for the sake of this study, we're going to barge in and we're going to see the heart of a person in 2020. If this were an actual video and not just an audio, then it would have to be 18 plus because the first thing you see in a person's heart is sexual abominations. If you could see the hearts of people as if you're walking in an open world video game in a big city, you're going to see billboards with half-naked women. In Matthew 5.28 it says, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And we're in a time where you can instantly see completely naked people, women on the internet. This is why people's mind is so dirty. This is why the world has gotten so sexually perverted. Even on these TikTok videos the kids watch. Just people constantly scrolling, seeing filth. And it does something to the brain. Gives instant gratification, sets off chemicals in your brain because you're just constantly seeing something new every few seconds. And it just keeps you guessing about what you're going to see next. And it's like that with a lot of things today. The Facebook, the, the news feed, constantly refreshing the news feed so you can see something new. But these things... Keep your eyes full of sexual perversion. In Second Peter 2.14 it says, Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Every time a man looks at these things like TikTok and Instagram, he feasts his eyes on something and he creates another image in his heart. So when he's walking down the street of his imaginations, he can see all of these images that he's compiled through looking at these things on the internet. The more images he has, the more easy it is for him to sin and to just start lusting out of nowhere. And that verse doesn't say eyes full of adultery for no reason. Have you ever heard the common saying, he just got an eye full? When a man sees a naked woman, they say, he just got an eye full. Now they call it eye candy. But every time he sees it, he's just storing up images, making it easier to sin. So if his heart was a big city, you'd see porn on the billboards. If you're walking through the city of his heart, you would see people getting shot and cut in pieces. When God said back there in Genesis 6 that the imaginations and thoughts of the people's heart was only evil continually, he also said in Genesis 6, 11, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And this man's heart we are walking through, he has officially defunded the police and has become his own final authority, authority and doesn't answer to anyone but himself. Certainly not to God. So just like in the Grand Theft Auto video games, he can come up to someone and steal their car or shoot them right in the head because it is his world and everybody else is just living in it. It's all about him. As Paul said, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. In his heart sin abounds because in Matthew twenty four twelve, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And all the road signs... In this city of his heart. If his heart's a city. What do the road signs say? They'll say the way of the transgressor. They'll say the ways of death. It'll say the broad way. Because in Proverbs thirteen fifteen, It says good understanding giveth favor. But the way of transgressors is hard. Proverbs fourteen twelve says there is a way. Which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Matthew seven thirteen and 14 Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. The path down the narrow way has been cut off in this city, because he has mandated a, a quarantine. And he doesn't want any of those people over there on the other side infecting him any. He doesn't want any of that to rub off on him. So he wears a mask as he smokes a joint and drinks his beer because he's, you know, he's real worried about his health. 
and his heart is, is a very weird and wicked place. But it does have a church, and the pastor painted all of, over all the signs that we just talked about. He, he, he took some paint, and he painted over all the signs that showed his heart was leading him to the path of destruction, and he changed the way of the transgressor to the way of happiness. He changed the way of death to the way of snuggles. He changed the lake of fire to the lake of puppies and pancakes. The pastor had his own star on the road with all the other false god celebrities of the man's heart. You know, like the Hollywood stars that they got on the road. Second uh, Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. The average person today only wants to hear smooth teaching and smooth preaching. This doesn't help clean your thoughts it doesn't plow your heart. It makes the things in the heart seem like they aren't so, so bad. And, you know, Paul talks about in Romans how the law makes things seem exceeding sinful. But, you know, when you turn on the TV, it makes things seem not so sinful. What you put in your ears will help or hurt your thought life. Most of the music today will also put thoughts in the mind. Even the beat of the song can put wicked thoughts in the mind. A lot of the songs just remind a person of adultery and fornication. But Psalms 139.23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. You could send out a search party in the average wicked man's heart, and you won't find a desire for God in his word if you search his heart the psalmist said search me O god what if god searched your heart what would he find if you could travel through a man's thought life today you would find affairs that haven't happened yet because these things start in the heart you might find a murder and when you search a real sick man's heart you might find missing children you might find abortion clinics the man's heart is a wicked place to where almost anything goes. All crime is legal. You can do what you want. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. If your heart was a place, I'd hate to go there and get lost because I wouldn't make it through the night. Because it is a godless place. The average man's heart is a godless place. Psalms 10, 9 the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. It's godless. The average man's mind is godless. He don't give God a thought. He doesn't care about the Bible. Romans one twenty eight says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. A man sits around and thinks about what he will eat. The witch is food that will never satisfy him for very long. He sits around and thinks about what he is going to do when he gets home. But yet the night will come to an end and he will be back at work again the next day. A young couple thinks about their future, but then the future comes and they are old and they die. It's all vanity. Psalms 94.11 says, The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. If you really examine your thought life, you will come to the conclusion that God is against a good portion of it, or if not most of it, if not all of it. In Proverbs fifteen twenty six, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. What if I travel through a lost man's thoughts, as if it were a city or a small town, and see the places of education? In Second Timothy three seven, it says, "Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth." In Romans one twenty two, it says, "Professing themselves." To be wise, they became fools. The lost man may place a lot of facts and things in his mind that he thinks about, but many times he is educated so much that he won't humble himself and seek God. Jesus Christ becomes a fairy tale for grown-ups to him because of all the facts. And he just sits around and thinks about these facts, and it damns him because he just... He gets more uh, of an unbelieving heart to, where, to the point where he does not want anything to do with Jesus Christ. He thinks he is so smart and yet he's a fool. In Mark seven twenty one through 23, Jesus says, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. What you think about.
can defile you. What you think about, you'll end up doing it if you keep thinking about it. And don't keep yourself in check with the word of God and prayer. Jesus said in Matthew twelve thirty four, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You ever wonder why people sit and talk about certain things? It's because that's what's deep down on their heart. Spirits are also connected with thoughts. God can put thoughts in your brain and unclean spirits can put thoughts in your brain. For example... In Hebrews 8.10, it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and will write them in their hearts. In Nehemiah 7.5, it says, And my God put into mine heart. In John 13.2, it says, And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. The devil put the thought of betraying Jesus, Jesus in the heart of Judas. In 2 Corinthians 8, 16, it says, But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care in the heart of Titus for you. When you have like a, over, a feeling of being overcome with love for someone or care for someone, God put that in your heart. And the devil and unclean spirits talk to you through other people. They talk to you through what you're putting in your ears and eyes. And then they influence what comes out of your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And that is why in 1 Kings 22, 21 through 22, it says, And there, and there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. So what can a person do about these thoughts? What can a man do about his heart looking like sin city? What can a man do about his mind being in the gutter? Literally. You know, somebody might say, I'm from the gutter. Talking about, you know, a, a filthy place that they live. A filthy city. That's what the average man mind has become. His mind is literally in the gutter. What can a man do about a dirty mind? The first thing is make sure you're saved. And I'm assuming most people who are listening to this is saved. But you can't clean up your heart without being washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 John 1, 7, it says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. In Revelation 1, 5, it says, Unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. If your thoughts and heart are like a city, like sin city, as a lost person, Get saved, and the blood of Jesus Christ will come through and give it a bloodbath. However, there is going to have to be some effort on your part. After you get saved, God does not force you to clean up your life or to have good thoughts or to choose Him over your flesh. You have to make that choice. You have to, of your own free will, choose to do right and think right after you get saved. In Proverbs 3, 1, it says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Instead of having your heart and mind keep up with the latest filth keep his commandments keep up with your daily bible reading keep up with your prayer life if you imagine your mind as a city you can't just knock everything down without replacing it with something else many many times somebody tries to knock down all the buildings and don't put up better buildings in their place so over time the old buildings get built back up and they are built a lot nicer and then they're even harder to take down so when you break down something when you break down the old buildings you need to put new ones up in its place when you ditch a sinful hobby you're going to have to take up a holy hobby in its place another reason you're having so many bad thoughts is because you have too much time on your hands and not enough working with your hands uh, getting a job and working with your hands will be a kick in the face to a bad thought life. Reading the Bible will be another kick to the face. Praying will be another kick to the face. Giving up old hobbies will be another kick to the face. And replacing those hobbies, you're going to be on your way. When you give up the old sinful hobbies and replace them with, replace them with new ones, your brain changes. God begins to change your brain. And that's not something that automatically happens at salvation. Your brain does not get automatically changed. You have to, it's a process. You have to willingly give yourself to, to the Holy Spirit's leading. 
Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Psalms 119, 9, Wherewithal shall the young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. How are you going to cleanse that dirty mind? Take all your CDs and your porno movies and the Hollywood movies with rape and torture and murder and burn them and get a King James Bible and read it. That's how you're going to do it. That's how you're going to change your thought life. Quit talking to people that's putting filthy thoughts in your mind and start talking to people that's going to put holy thoughts in your mind. Let the word come in your heart and get rid of all the junk. In Ephesians 5.26 it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. If you replaced all your entertainment with Bible reading, you will notice a change in your mouth. You will notice that you don't lust as much. And it's not going to cut everything down because you're not going to be perfect. But if you're struggling with horrible thoughts, scary thoughts, terrifying thoughts at night when you lay down to go to bed, if you're str struggling with lustful thoughts, it's because you're putting something in your ears and in your eyes that's against God, that's an abomination in the sight of God, because God doesn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, God doesn't put stumbling blocks in your way to make you lust. All that stuff, all those horrible thoughts are straight from the devil. And you're going to have to get in the Word. Keep your mind on something holy. Meditate on the Word all day long. For example, today I've, I've been trying to memorize the first chapter of Luke. It's 80 verses. And all day long I've just been repeating those verses all day long in my head while I'm at work. Keeping those bad thoughts out of my life somebody will make you mad and you'll you'll start thinking about how angry you are at that person get a verse start going over the verse to memorize it keep your mind occupied with holy things whatsoever is pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things paul tells you what to think about there in philippians 4 think on whatsoever things are pure and right and holy and that's how you're going to have a good thought life. If you do these things that I've told you, it's going to clean up your thought life. It's not going to be perfect because we're not going to be perfect in this life. But you are going to notice a huge difference. If you just do those few things, get rid of your old sinful hobbies, replace them with Bible reading, prayer. Get rid of friends that are making you have bad thoughts. Replace them with new friends that's going to give you holy thoughts. If you'll do these things, you'll notice a huge difference.